Panda with them after that win. Thank you very much, Joe. Yeah, what a time to bounce back for SK Gaming and how. Let's talk about the game a little bit. Nothing really special coming in there, but the first Alistar we've seen here, and he can be a real lane bully, but it seemed like you guys had the recipe for playing against him, so talk me through that lane. Yeah, we had uh, Gragas and Kogma, who have a lot of pokes, so even Alistar can't like uh, heal against that. And also, Gragas has a bad all-in, so we just pressured the lane a lot. But they managed to keep up and farm really well. That was... Uh, they could have went better. So the game sort of accelerated in your control early on. In the mid-game, Fnatic sort of clawed some way back, got some towers, got a bunch of kills. It felt like you guys were in control the majority of the match, though. What was it that allowed you and the rest of the team to keep Fnatic at arm's reach and maintain control of the game? Yeah, so I think we bunt out uh, Source's champions, and he went for Yasuo, and we had Renekton. And that's already like a matchup that Renekton can push up against and pressure. And then mid was very, going very well as well. And bottom, we pushed in as well. So whenever Sven went into his into uh, Sinai's jungle, he was Elise versus Eve. So it's already better for the Eve, uh, for the Elise, sorry. And we pushed up, so we could always help him sooner than they could. And that way we could uh, pressure them all the time. Yeah, talk me through the champion picture on Kogma. This game we saw Trasana, and actually those champions, as other roles have opened up and embraced new champions, it seemed that it has come to those two picks uh, primarily in the bottom lane. How does that suit your play style? I mean, I was known for like Kogma and Tristana and Caitlyn. Caitlyn isn't so strong right now, but the other two fit me really well. They like hyper carry, so that's what I like. But I mean, Tristana's getting nerfed now and Kogma as well, so I would be sad. But there's Lucian, so that's not so bad. <laughs> okay, so I've got a question for you. There was a lot of talk in the middle of the split about patches and your team's work ethic and scrims. Yeah. Now you've got champions that are definitely working in your favor. You're helping to carry SK Gaming. Is SK 3-0 in Super Week because 4.12 and 80 carries suit you and your team? Or is SK 3-0 in Super Week because you're actually playing at a better level? I think it's uh, the later. Like, we just scrim more and we play more solo queue and we put more effort into it, we talk more, we just do everything more, we just like devote our life to, to the game right now. And that the, I mean, I was known for Israel as well, so it's not like I can't play other champions, so it's more like we just put more effort into it. Well, it's good to see. You guys are definitely performing very well. Tomorrow you've got your last game against Gambit. I'm not sure if you're aware, but you could make or break their seventh place seed. Uh, are you going for the perfect 4-0 Super Week, looking for the highest uh, playoff spot possible? And uh, how much less or more work have you prepared for Gambit in comparison to Alliance and Fnatic today? Uh, I think we're just going to use the game tomorrow to like, finish the week off in a good manner. And it's not our, our business if Gambit or Wolves go 8, so we will just play our game. Yeah, that's what we like to hear. Final question. Uh, SK Gaming Prime is setting up here on stage to face ninjas in pajamas. Um, how do you think that matchup will go for your sister team, I said? I mean, SK Prime upset H2K as far as I know, so it will be a really good match, especially since like, Nib is like, known as the best challenger team in, in Europe right now. So <laughs> I cheer for SK Prime, but it will be a really close match. I like your air quotes there. Well, <laughs> congratulations. Great Super Week so far for you guys. Now we'll head back over to Joe and the Fisho for an update on.